Lord's Day devotion for the week beginning today, Sunday, January 14, 2024. I am your brother Clinton. I make these videos on the first day of the week, which the earliest church named the Lord's Day, the day after the Sabbath, which means seventh day rest yesterday. They did this to give God the glory on the first day of the week, beginning the week well. They wanted to give Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all creation, and our Heavenly Father, the first and their best. Today we're going to be going to the following books of the Bible. The exact scriptures are in the description. I urge you to look them up. It will be going to Jeremiah, Hebrews, and Revelation. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, great and glorious God, you are the only true God, the God not only of Israel, but of all of humanity, the God of the nations, the Creator. We praise you, Father God, that you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins and victoriously raised from the dead to prove that he is the one that you sent to be the Savior. Praise you, Father God, for your plan of salvation. Thank you that even today, Israel has a role in the fulfillment of your word and particularly Bible prophecy. We pray, Heavenly Father God, that you bless the viewers and listeners of this video with a closer, more intimate relationship with you, Heavenly Father, by your Son, Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Jeremiah was a prophet of God during a particularly difficult time for the faithful in the Lord. Um, Israel at that time um, was uh, fractured and uh, a group whom we now call the Jews were, were living in Jerusalem and they, uh, there were some faithful, but there were many people worshiping false gods and there were others who claimed to be doing so, but they were actually not. There were many false prophets and false teachers. This is the environment in which God called Jeremiah to be prophet. Now, in his day, um, Jeremiah prophesied according to what the Lord told him to do and told him to say, and he witnessed the, uh, the time leading up to the exile of, the, of Israel, the Hebrews, to Babylon, which was the capital of the ancient Babylonian empire. That's the context of this scripture. So we're going to read from uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, starting at verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each one teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more." Notice on that last phrase, a future time of forgiving their sins and remembering their sin no more. A time in the future. Keep that in mind. Let's go to the next one. Hebrews chapter 12, verses 22 through 29. This is the book by the Apostle Paul, uh, specifically to Hebrew Christians Jewish Christians who had received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. However, it's for obviously the whole church as it's, it's in the canon of the Bible. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 through 29. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, 
and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse him who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns us from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, Yet once more, and I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, and thus let us offer to God acceptable worship with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Revelations chapter 21 verses 1 through 7. Now this this is John who is an apostle and he's in his writing here presenting to us confirmation of the vision he was given directly by Jesus Christ according to the Holy Spirit in him, and the vision that he received, he did write down very faithfully. Verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling of God is with man, and, with, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. And behold, who is seated on the throne, he said, Behold, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give from the spring of the water of life without payment. The one who conquers will have this inheritance, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, you are an awesome God to be loved and feared. We're grateful for the free gift of everlasting life only offered through your son Christ Jesus in fulfillment of the many prophecies of the Messiah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the church. We thank you, Father God, that you are preparing the church for hard times to come, and we're going to be better equipped than ever before. I have faith in the name of Jesus, and the church will continue to grow, and many saved, and others who are saved will continue to grow in spirit as you cause them to grow. And I praise you, Father God, and we're looking forward to that glorious re redemption. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen.